All right, guys, your favorite giant gorilla is back. No, not that one. Not that one either, but never forget. Kong's out for Harambe. King Kong is gracing the big screen again in reboot Kong Skull Island. And if it's half as good as this Japanese poster, I'd say we're in for a wild ride. Skull Island pulls together Loki, Nick Fury, and Captain Marvel. And if you're into Marvel, DC, other general nerdery, be sure to check out the rest of the GameSpot Universe channel because we have got some videos that you are gonna love. So before you see Kong Skull Island, here's five things you need to know about the world's most gung-ho gargantuan giant gorilla. And other words beginning with G. When you think of King Kong, it's typically accompanied by an early 30s aesthetic and a vision of biplanes avoiding swinging arms around the top of the Empire State Building. This time, however, things are a little bit different. When director Jordan Vogt Roberts first got his hands on a script, it took place in 1917. And when he pitched the idea of a Vietnam-era Kong, he fully expected to be laughed out of the room. But he had a great argument for why it should be set in the 70s. The 70s was a time of change, where the world was in a state of chaos, America was losing its first wars, there were riots and political scandals, and man was making new discoveries by venturing into space. But one of the draws for this idea was the opportunity amid the space race to show an era of Earth left untouched by man, an island both pure and mysterious, yet impure and terrifying. And judging from what we've seen so far, the setting has also allowed for a much more action-packed version of Kong. Flamethrowers spewing fire through boneyards, assault rifles shooting down giant spiders, and a giant gorilla sucker punching Hueys out of the sky. All of this, plus a definite platoon slash apocalypse now vibe. I mean, just look at this poster. The marketing team were on point for this film. The reimagining of King Kong brings us all this, plus the banging soundtrack of the 70s. I'm sold already. by the blazing barrier of a billion volts. But nothing, nobody can stop the great showdown when King Kong and Godzilla meet to fight for survival of the fittest. King Kong versus Godzilla. For a movie to be worth its salt these days, it either needs to establish or be part of an expanded universe. We've got the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the Jump Street verse, and even the Vin Diesel forced family verse. I don't have friends. I got family. 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 Family, 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 family. What you may not know is that King Kong's latest outing is part of the legendary studio's MonsterVerse. Sure, it's not exactly a catchy title and liable to be confused with Universal's MonsterVerse, but the idea has a lot of potential. Skull Island, it turns out, is the second film in a shared universe established by Godzilla, the 2014 flick directed by Gareth Edwards starring Brian Cranston, Ken Watanabe, and a pissed off oversized dinosaur. Legendary has confirmed plans to unite Godzilla and King Kong in a movie creatively titled Godzilla vs King Kong. Nice one, Legendary. Why not just stick a Dawn of Justice at the end and give them both a mum called Martha? Anyways, the glue that's holding this hot collabo together is Monarch, the shady secret government agency that appeared in Godzilla. Excitingly, it's not just Kong and Zilla that Monarch has its eyes on. Legendary has acquired the rights to Mothra, Rodan, and King Ghidorah too, and has said Monarch will be bringing together an ecosystem of other giant super species. Basically, this is going to be a movie version of the Rampage video game series. Someone should probably tell Legendary that Rampage is also being made into a movie, and it features the legendary Brahma Bull. You are going to tell me everything I don't know, or I'm going to blow your head off. Monsters exist. I know what you're thinking. Didn't we just get a Kong movie? Sort of. It may not feel like it, but our last trip to Skull Island was back in 2005, which was a mere 12 years ago. It was a slick retelling of the 1976 movie, which in itself was a redo of the 1933 original. You know the one where an intrepid film crew travels to Kong's home, captures him and ships him off to New York to be the eighth wonder of the world. Yada yada, monkey escapes, Empire State Building, Beauty Killed the Beast. Kong Takes Manhattan has been done to death. 
Which is why Kong Skull Island isn't going to tell that story. It's part of the new MonsterVerse after all. It's got some groundwork to lay. According to director Jordan Vogt Roberts, it's gonna be set within the mythology of Kong, focusing on his battle for dominion over Skull Island, with him squaring off against the skull crawlers who wiped out the rest of his kind. As long as there's plenty of monster on monster action, I'm game. Is that a monkey? What the hell is that? Since his first appearance on our screens in the early 30s, King Kong has always been big. But he has never been this big. Except in the Japanese movies. The first version of King Kong we saw was from Marion C. Cooper, who wanted to make him between 40 and 50 feet tall. However, the animators had the final say and he was scaled to 18 feet when on Skull Island and 24 feet when taken to New York. The reason for that is unclear, but it's a trend that continued into the 1976 remake, where he ranged between 42 and 55 feet. When Peter Jackson got his hands on the franchise in 2005, Kong was shrunk back down to 25 feet to make him seem less anthropomorphic. But now it's time for a new king. In Skull Island, Kong is a whopping 100 feet tall, towering above pretty much anything you can see in Skull Island. A monkey that big leaves quite an impression. Admittedly, this might be a little troubling when it comes to fighting everyone's favorite kaiju in 2020's Godzilla vs. King Kong, since the big green lizard himself is nearly 400 feet at this point, but we will let the clever movie makers figure that one out. That's the big one. You might think it's easy to design King Kong. You take a gorilla, supersize it, and then make it behave like a Call of Duty player desperately trying to raise his kill death ratio. But actually, a lot more thought goes into the creation of everyone's favorite upset monster than you think. Skull Island director Jordan Vault Roberts actually looked to animation legend Hayao Miyazaki of Studio Ghibli fame when bringing Kong and the world around him to life. Roberts wanted Skull Island to have its own vibe and ecosystem of weird and wonderful creatures, and Miyazaki's work helped him think outside of the box. The result is that we've got a cool giant water buffalo and this terrifying skull crawler. If that looks familiar, that's because it was created using this simple formula. Angel from Evangelion, plus No Face from Spirit Away, plus Cubone from Pokemon equals skull crawler. Needless to say, there will be plenty of fascinating creatures for us to feast our eyes on in Skull Island. Thanks for watching this week guys, if you like this video make sure to leave us a like or a subscribe or if you're feeling generous, why not both? On last week's video about things you didn't know about Matt Damon, we asked you, what are your favourite Matt Damon roles? Zero Cool's response was, Matt, Matt Damon. Damon. Nice. Meanwhile, on the website, GameSpot.com, Hot Love Games website. that place. X Deathclaw X, I'm pretty sure I teabagged him on Halo back on the original Xbox. Come on. <laughs> He says that he's been trying to get on a certain late night talk show for more than a decade. Conan O'Brien. No, it's, it's Jimmy Kimmel. All right, cool. But his Jimmy's a Kimmel or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll be back again next week with some more cool entertainment video stuff for you. Make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Why are we saluting? <laughs> <laughs>